Who's your favorite musician? Whether it's Mozart, Freddie Mercury, James Brown, or Michael Jackson, have you ever wished they could have lived forever and been able to create music until the end of time? Well, now hear this. This isn't a lost record from the 90s, but a brand new track resembling Nirvana's style perfectly. How about Amy Winehouse? I have seen it all, but it doesn't show one bit. My mind never read. Or do you prefer classical music? We can now hear new songs from legendary artists or listen to the final movements of an unfinished symphony composed centuries ago. But how is it possible? Artificial intelligence is the unseen composer and performer that stands behind this music. It's transforming the realm of sound, voice, and music creation, playing a role that's equally groundbreaking and controversial. So. Let's delve into the fascinating world of AI sound generation and explore how this technology makes us doubt what we hear. To trace the story from the very beginning, we have to step back into the late 1940s, the time when the term artificial intelligence didn't exist and the Beatles were just schoolboys. That's when the first murmurs of artificially created sound began. Alan Turing, renowned for his pioneering work in computing, was the first to get a simple, synthesized tone. He programmed his computing machine, which occupied much of the lab's ground floor and looked like the control center of a battleship, so that the loudspeaker emitted short pulses of sound. Turing described it as something between a tap, a click, and a thump. While he wasn't interested in producing music, Turing created different notes by varying the patterns of those pulses and used these sounds to indicate various computer processes. But the credit for a real musical breakthrough goes to Christopher Strachey. This young school teacher with a talent for the piano got fascinated by Turing's instructions on programming musical notes and saw the potential for something greater. With Turing's blessing, Strachey spent a night at the computer console. By morning, he had successfully programmed the computer to play God Save the King, the national anthem. Yeah, it wasn't the most pleasant sound ever, but that first primitive computer music performance of 1951 was the seed from which a vast field of AI sound generation would grow. From 1957, Lajaran Hiller's Iliac Suite for String Quartet. To Max Matthews' Daisy Bell, also known as Bicycle Built for Two. In the 1980s, Laurie Spiegel created Music Mouse an interactive composing software that ran on early personal computers. It allowed users to generate complex musical sequences by simply moving the mouse. The program interpreted these movements to create harmonically rich and rhythmically intricate compositions on the fly. The mid-2010s marked a new era of collaboration between AI researchers and sound engineers as deep learning entered the stage. Neural networks were extensively trained to generate lifelike human speech and realistic musical sequences. Some notable projects of that time are Google's Magenta and WaveNet by DeepMind, which are actually still used to create complex, high-quality sounds. In the late 2010s, transformer models were introduced particularly in open AI tools such as ChatGPT and MuseNet. More sophisticated tools followed suit. Lovo, Murph.ai, Valley, Suno, Eleven Labs, all these platforms powered by deep learning democratized audio content generation, allowing anyone to explore the infinite universe of sounds. 
But how do these tools go from input data and text prompts to symphonies? Let's explore the technical side of sound generation and look at what's under the hood. First, let's decode the basics. When you speak, clap your hands, or play music, you are creating vibrations in the air. These vibrations travel through the air, and when they reach your ears, they make your eardrum vibrate, which your brain interprets as sound. Those are known as sound waves. But computers don't have eardrums to interpret air vibrations, so we have to represent sound waves in a format machines can understand. The two main ways to do it are waveforms and spectrograms. Waveforms are graphs that display sound with two parameters, time and amplitude. The amplitude reflects how powerful the sound is. A short waveform is quiet, while a tall waveform is loud. Here's what a waveform of this sentence looks like. Spectrograms are more complex than waveforms as they use three parameters to represent sound, time, frequency, and intensity. They let you see which frequencies are present in a sound and how their intensities vary over time. Here's a spectrogram of what you're hearing now. Looks pretty, doesn't it? For us humans, both waveforms and spectrograms aren't very readable, but that's exactly how computers perceive sound. So, generative AI models are trained on thousands of hours of various audio files in the format of waveforms or spectrograms. As a result, the algorithms get to know the main characteristics of sound, such as pitch, rhythm, and texture, and also learn to recognize sound patterns. There are several main types of machine learning models that can generate sound. One of them is autoregressive models. Imagine a chef cooking a gourmet dish, adding ingredients one by one, tasting and adjusting based on what's already in the pot. Autoregressive models do something similar with sound. They listen to what has just been played and add a new sample based on the previous ones. Then, they take the result and generate the next sample, and so on, one step at a time. One example of autoregressive models is WaveNet, created by DeepMind. Listen to the results they achieved back in 2016. The Blue Lagoon is a 1980 American romance and adventure film directed by Randall Kleiser. The second model type used for sound creation is Variational Autoencoders VAEs. These are neural networks that learn to extract important features from input data. They have two main parts, the encoder and the decoder. During training, the encoder compresses complex data describing a spectrogram or waveform into a smaller, simplified version. Imagine taking Taylor Swift's song Antihero and playing it on a harmonica. Sounds, well, pretty simplistic, doesn't it? The second network, the decoder, then takes the compressed data and tries to turn it into its original form. In our case, let's say your friend listens to you play and tries to make a full-featured world hit out of your simple tune without ever hearing the original. After his try, you let him compare the real thing with his version and adjust. Both networks are trained on thousands of audio files until they can learn how to compress the track and then reconstruct it perfectly. But how do you make new music out of it? In production, you sample these compressed records, so-called latent space, and ask the decoder to reconstruct them. And here comes the variational part. This compressed latent space music data allows for some deviation. So when the new tune is generated, it's similar, but still unique. In other words, your friend knows all Taylor Swift's songs so well that he can perfectly copy her style to create new music, just like that. Another popular generative model is Transformers. During their training, as they learn the patterns and structures in the music, Transformers use a special process called the attention mechanism. It allows them to focus on different parts of the music data to understand the relationships and interdependencies between samples over time. Imagine an architect reviewing the blueprints of a building. They don't just look at one section. 
Instead, they consider the whole design to understand how each piece is related to others. How do they interact? How will changing one part of the construction affect other parts and the whole thing? Similarly, transformers consider the entire sequence when generating each sound, ensuring every part fits seamlessly into the whole. As they generate a new piece of music, transformers predict the next set of samples based on the patterns they learned during training, one set at a time. Each new sample set is chosen based on the immediately preceding ones and the broader patterns in the music data it has learned. These are the main AI models for sound generation. Well, there are also generative adversarial networks, GANs, but they are used way less. We've already described them in much detail in our previous videos in this series, so if you want to take a deeper dive, check them out. These generative models aren't necessarily used separately. Today, their capabilities can be combined to achieve the best results. But what exactly are we trying to achieve? Why do we need to generate audio content? AI sound, voice, and music generation technologies are fascinating in their wide array of applications, both current and potential. Well, we won't discuss purely entertainment ones here. We're sure that you've already tried to create a birthday song for your pet or make Sinatra sing an Eminem hit. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. You better never let it go. You only get one shot to not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Well, we did, but jokes aside. So probably one of the most familiar use cases is voice assistants. Talking to robots has become so normal. They can be programmed to reflect different voices, accents, and even emotional tones, making interactions more personalized, and they keep developing. Previously, you could count on Google Assistant to tell you the weather, or Siri to explain zero divided by zero. Now, you can hold pretty meaningful conversations with ChatGPT as it interacts with its surrounding in real time. Though, of course, things happen. What can I get for you? Do you okay, sorry about that. I'm back. What can I get for you? Do you have... Okay, sorry about that. Music composition and production is another obvious use for AI. As you've seen throughout this video, it can help compose new melodies, remix existing tracks, and create new sound textures and effects. But it's still just a gimmick. As of now, there are no commercially viable projects that rely on AI for music generation. So you don't need to worry about Hans Zimmer. He's not getting out of the business just yet. Lately, video game developers have been experimenting with AI-generated voiceovers. They say it's cheaper, faster, and easier. For example, Obsidian uses AI text-to-speech technology while working on the game to get a better idea of how their characters will sound after the voicing by real actors. Embark Studios went even further. They've released their online shooter, The Finals, with generative AI actually doing almost all the in-game voicing. Well, the results are debatable, but the potential is definitely there. Voice cloning, despite the related controversies, can also be quite helpful. For example, you might have heard of Al Michaels, though it's likely you don't know what he looks like. During his over five-decade-long career, this legendary sportscaster called nine Olympic Games, 11 Super Bowls, eight World Series, and many other major sports events globally. So, NBC approached Al, offering to recreate his voice with AI to cover this summer's Olympics. Though skeptical at first, Michaels gave his go-ahead after he heard how well AI captured his intonations and verbal subtleties, and it actually went quite well. If you're a swimming fan, let's head right to the pool. Team USA secured a stunning victory in the men's 4 by 100 meter medley relay, smashing the world record. Over the so, sound generation isn't only about making music. Though it's still in its infancy, its potential to benefit us in various areas of life is actively being researched. And who knows what we'll find? On the other hand, there are also many debatable or even illegal uses of this viral technology. So let's talk about the controversies surrounding AI sound generation. Ownership and copyright. One of the thorniest issues is who owns the music created by AI? 
If an algorithm generates a hit song, should the credit and the royalties go to the developer of the program or the user who prompts the generation? Can the artist who provided the input claim their share? Or maybe it's the AI itself who is supposed to capitalize on its brain children? This gray area is causing headaches for the music industry, where copyright laws are struggling to keep up with technological advances. Major record labels, including Universal, Sony, and Warner, have recently filed a suit against the two biggest sound generators, Suno and Udio. They accuse platforms of illegally using their copyrighted recordings to train AI systems. The labels are seeking court orders to stop the companies from further infringement and demanding nearly $350 million in damages. We'll have to wait and see what comes out of it. Artist reactions vary greatly. Some see it as a threat, others ignore it. Some embrace the new world, while yet others are outraged by hearing their voices in the most unusual compositions. Some seem to be just having fun with AI. This is the future rave sound. I'm getting lost in an underground. And some see the opportunity in the new technology. For example, the Canadian performer Grimes explicitly allowed fans to use her voice to create songs and split the royalties. But let's get back to the controversies. The use of AI in sound generation also raises ethical questions. For instance, voice cloning technology can replicate a person's voice so accurately that it can be used for nefarious purposes, such as creating deepfakes. Just listen to how realistically Eleven Labs copies voices from just a short training audio. Hey, wait, is that my voice? And here, the potential for misuse is huge. It can be a phone call from someone who sounds just like your family member or friend asking for help. Criminals can impersonate high-ranking officials in a company, instructing employees to make unauthorized transfers or reveal confidential company information. Scam investment opportunities, fraudulent authorization requests, manipulating public opinion. Unfortunately, the spectrum of possible fraudulent activities is immense. The list of controversies goes on. And as technologies advance and become more accessible, all these issues are potential threats. As we look to the future, AI continues to harmonize with our musical traditions, promising a symphony of possibilities, accompanied by a dissonant rattle of concerns. Who knows how our future will sound? The score is being written now. One thing we can be certain about is that, ready or not, AI is here to stay. So subscribe to our channel to keep up with the rush of tech innovations, and we'll see you in the next video.